Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick. Uh, continuing our AP Calculus AB Unit 1, we're talking about limits and continuity. And today's topic is topic 1.3, which is estimating limit values from graphs. So estimating limit values from graphs is what we should title our paper for today. And we're gonna get into today's notes next. All right, for today's notes, uh, we're gonna start off with some definitions before we get into our practice. So for our notes, uh, this is an introduction to limits. The first couple of these is review from what we've talked about the last couple classes, and we're gonna get into some uh, more specifics uh, today. So first off, uh, for part A notation, uh, we've got this limit statement, which we introduced in sections 1.1 1 .1 and 1 1.2, uh, which, is, which is read as the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. And we're saying that both c and l are real numbers. Um, and so that is the way that we write what's called a limit statement. And sort of a key piece of this that I wanna remind you of is that this whole left side of the equation is all one part, it's all together. The limit is part of that f of x. We uh, keep them together in, uh, when we're doing this. Um, and so if we were to remove say the f of x or the l or the c, this limit statement would not make sense. And so all of those are really important if we're writing our own limit statements as well. Now informally, we, uh, defined a limit as, by saying that as x gets really, really close to c, and then today we're adding this from both sides, the y values of the function f of x get really, really close to some value l. So again, our informal definition of limit, this is not a particularly mathematical definition, uh, but informally, we're saying that as x gets really, really close to c from both sides, that y values of the fu uh, function f of x get really, really close to l. Our big idea here is that limits are simply y values. They are y values on a graph. Uh, but not all functions have limits at every specific x value. And so we need to figure out how we find those limits. And we're going to get next into uh, some new, new stuff. And so this right here is new for today, parts d and e here. Specifically, the idea of this thing called a one-sided limit. And so it says sometimes it is useful to talk about limits coming from a certain direction. I'm going to highlight this because it is a keyword. We're talking about it coming from a certain direction. There are two different ways that we would call limits coming from a particular direction. One would be coming from the right or coming from the left. Now you'll notice, I'm gonna zoom in so you can actually see for this, when we're talking about from the right, notice that our notation is a little bit different. You might notice that it's got this little plus sign that's right here on that C value. The reason why it's got that plus sign is to emphasize that it's coming from the positive direction. And if you think about a number line, the way that we normally have a number line, if this is zero, we know that the positive numbers are on the right and the negative numbers are on the left. And so if we're saying that it's coming from the right, well, it's coming from that positive direction, so we put that little plus sign on, which almost looks like an exponent on that C value. And we say that notice that the C value has a plus as its exponent. Now, similarly, if we're talking about from the left, that means it's coming from the negative direction on that number line. And you'll notice that when we write that limit, it's got a little negative exponent on there. And that's telling us that it's coming from the left or from that negative direction. And again, we notice that it has that negative exponent uh, in that particular case. So sometimes we see limits like we have up here. I'm gonna circle in green next. All the way up here at the top, we have limits here, which you'll notice that have no exponents at all. Right? There's no exponent on this C that is sort of like an overall limit or a limit from both sides. And then sometimes down here we have limits uh, that have these exponents with that plus or that minus, which are giving us a direction that it's coming from, whether it's from the left or from the right. Uh, with that said, we up here gave an informal definition of limit, so that's not a very mathematical one. If we get to part E, we're gonna to get to the actual mathematical definition. So this is the formal definition of limit. This is the real mathematical definition. Of what a limit is. And so specifically here, you'll notice if we're talking about uh, 
you know, whether like what a limit is, it's saying that if both the limit from the right side, so with this little plus sign, is equal, so the limit as x approaches c from the right is equal to L, and the limit as x approaches c from the left of f of x is equal to L, if both of these limits are equal to each other, then we can conclude that the overall limit, notice it has no exponent, is also equal to L. So again, our conclusion here for the formal definition of a limit is if we're going to say that an, uh, an overall limit exists, the limit from the left and the limit from the right side have to equal the same value L. Whatever that, that Y value is, that output is, they have to be the same thing. Otherwise, we say that there is no limit. And specifically, the way that we write that is if we say the limit as X approaches C, say from the right of F of X, if we say that they're not equal to each other, that it's not equal to the limit as x approaches c from the left side of f of x, then we can conclude, we can conclude here the overall limit as x approaches c with, with no exponent here uh, of f of x does not exist. It does not exist. And sometimes we write that as an abbreviation as DNE. DNE, it does not exist. So in situations where the limit from uh, our right side is not equal to the limit from the left side, we can conclude that the overall limit does not exist. If they are equal to each other, like we've got up here, then we say the limit does exist and the limit is equal to that exact same value uh, L. Let's see this in some actual problems. So from our notes packet for today, 1.3, finding limits from graphs, uh, let's go into this first part. So what is a one-sided limit? Well, a one-sided limit is the y value of a function approaches as you approach a given x value from either the left or the right side. So from one side, either the left direction or the right direction, the positive uh, numerical direction or the negative numerical direction. Examples here. So we notice here that the limit of, so going over this first one, the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the left side is negative 1. When we say that, so here is 3 on our x-axis, right? If we get closer to that graph, if we follow that graph from the left side going towards x equals 3, we're asking ourselves, what height is this y value? Well, that y value, if we go over here, is negative 1. So the way that we would write that is we'd say that the limit as x approaches 3, and since we're saying that's from the left side, that's the negative direction, so we're going to put a little negative on there, of f of x is equal to negative 1. This is how we would write that limit statement. For our second one, this says the limit of f as x approaches 3 from the right side is 2. Well, here is 3 again. It's still exactly where it was. But if we follow the function coming from the right side going towards x equals 3, we notice that it goes to this particular point, which has a height of 2. So that is why the limit uh, of f as x approaches 3 from the right side is 2. And so the way we would write that, well, limit as x approaches 3, the right side is the positive side, and of f of x is equal to 2. That is our one-sided limit statement. So we've got both of these two uh, limit statements. And now notice that it's saying if the two sides are different, well, my limit from the left and the limit from the right are not equal to each other. Those outputs are not the same. And so because of that, from our definitions before, since they are not the same, we're going to say that the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x does not exist does not exist. Or you can put DNE if you prefer to do that as well uh, as you're working through these types of problems. All right, so that is our first problem. Let's move on to problem number two where we've, where we've got a visual we can be looking at uh, here as well. So for problem A, we're talking about the limit as x approaches negative two. And that little negative exponent is telling me from the negative side or the left side. So this is from the left that we're talking about. And I see negative 2 on my graph. Here's my negative 2. If we're coming from the left, 
going towards x equals negative 2, we notice that it stops right about right here, which appears to have a height of 1. And so my limit is going to be equal to 1 for part A. For part B, this says the limit as x approaches negative 2, and it's got that little plus sign, so that's telling me from the right side. Well, if I'm going from negative 2, if I'm looking at my function, the part of the function that's going towards negative 2 from the right is actually this part right here. And we see as it, if we come from the right towards x equals negative 2, that this is going to stop at a height of negative 2. And that's going to be my limit for b. For c, this is then asking me the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x. Well, this one sort of relies on both of these, right? Because we know that if, the, if this is an overall limit, then we're talking about essentially from the left and from the right. I notice here that the limit from the left was 1, the limit from the right was negative 2. Since those two things are not equal to each other, we're going to say that the overall limit does not exist for that one. So that one is going to not exist for that. All right, let's move on to D. D. Limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. So there is no sign here. So we're talking about essentially a double-sided limit. Talk, we need to look about, about from the left and from the right. If I look at 1, we see on our graph uh, at 1 that that's, uh, you know, here's my 1. If I follow the function towards x equals 1, we can see that it's going right here from the left side. And from the right side, it's going to that particular value as well. And we see that that value has a height of 1. So 1 would be my limit for D. Both sides, the left and the right side for that particular one, we're going to the same Y value. They're both going to Y equals 1, when X equals 1. For the limit as X approaches 0 of F of X for E, well, let's clear this off so we can see what's going on. Uh, on this particular graph, at 0, so we see uh, x equals 0 uh, would be sort of the origin, and, and we're sort of looking down here at this point. From the left, we're going towards that value. From the right, we're going towards that value. So this particular point is going to be our what we're looking at, and that has a height of negative 2 if we're thinking about the y values. So negative 2 would be my limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, because from the left and from the right, they're going to the same y value, which is negative 2. In f, they ask us the limit as x approaches 3. This little negative sign, again, is telling us that we're talking about from the left. From the left. So if I'm thinking about negative, or, or positive 3, sorry, positive 3 from the left, well, here's positive 3. If we think about where our graph is, it's all the way up here. And if we're coming from the left towards x equals 3, it looks like it's going to that point, which has a height of 5. So that is going to be my limit as x approaches 3 from the left side. For g, the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x. Uh, if we go to our graph, limit as x approaches negative 1. Let's clear out our, our stuff that we've got right here. Uh, if we look at x equals negative 1, that's about right here. So we're going down and looking at this from the left and from the right. It looks like it's going to that spot, which has a height of negative 3, which is going to be our value for that one. f of 1. Notice that this doesn't have a limit statement. We're not talking about limits coming from the left or from the right here. f of 1 simply is asking you, what is the actual output of this function when x equals 1? Well, if we take a look at our graph over here, uh, we can see that when x equals 1, uh, there's sort of two things going on right here. An open circle here is telling me that this point actually doesn't exist on my graph. So in this case, we want to select the one that's filled in, and so that has a height of negative 2. So the actual output of this function when x equals 1 is going to be negative 2 for that. Well, what about when f is equal to negative 2 for part i? Well, similarly at negative 2, I sort of see two things that are going on right here. The open circle does not exist, or it's like undefined at that actual point. Uh, but this one here for finding the actual value, we notice it doesn't have a limit statement. We are going to pick the filled in one, which has a height of 1. f of negative 2 is going to be equal to 1. Moving on to example 3. Example 3, sketch a graph of a function g that satisfies all of the following conditions. So we're trying to make one graph 
that has all of these things going on. I'm gonna walk you through this process. We'll have some problems to, to try this with uh, as practice, but this is sort of tying together our idea of what limits and functions are. So first off, we know that this function g of three has to equal negative one. That means when the input is three, the output is gonna be negative one. So I know it has to go through the point three comma negative one. That has to be a point that this goes through if that's a point on the function. Then the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x is equal to 4. Well, if we look at 3 and we go up to 4, we know that if this limit is going to exist in part b, that means that the limit from the left and the limit from the right have to be going to that y value of 4, which means that the function needs to be up there connecting that sort of here on both sides. Now we don't really particularly know whether, uh, you know, how it's connected. You know, looking at this, it could look the way that it did. It could look like, you know, sort of like this or, or, or like that. We're not sure yet just from the details. All I know is that it needs to be connected on both sides to this spot at uh, 3 comma 4. So I'm going to clear out uh, just so we can see what we know for sure. Uh, I'll leave that there and we'll, we'll connect with the rest of it. So next, we know that the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right side is equal to one. So uh, at negative two, this is going to be going to a value of one. I'll put that there. We're gonna to need to connect these here in a little bit. And we know that G is increasing from negative two to three. So X equals negative two and X equals three. It's gonna be increasing, which means that graph is gonna be going up and connecting the two of those the entire time if it's increasing. Then we know that the limit from the left of G of X is greater than the limit from the right of g of x, which means that the y value on the left, coming from the left, has to be greater than the y value from the right. This y value we had down here at one, which means we need something up here, something bigger than it, really anywhere above one uh, from the left side. And so we can connect that graph and we need this limit to exist over here at three. So I'm just gonna sort of continue over here as well. Uh, and continue this graph. So this is this would be an example here of a piecewise function. Uh, and actually, let me fill in that particular point, which was at negative one. So this is a piecewise function where all of those uh, cor are correct. So we can see here, if we go back, uh, we can double check that g of three is equal to negative one. Hey, that's right there. We can double check that uh, what we drew, the limit as x approaches three of g of x is four. Hey, that's true right there. We can go through and we can say, okay, well, uh, is the limit as x approaches negative two from the right one? Yes, we can see that right there. Uh, then we can go on and say, is g increasing from negative two to three? Yes, we see that function is increasing. It's going upwards on that whole time from negative two to three. And then finally, is the uh, limit from the left greater than the limit from the right? Well, here's the limit from the left. It's greater than the limit from the right. Great, we are done. Um, I would love for you to practice on and continue, uh, see if you can get these uh, before going on to your mastery check. Uh, as usual, I'm gonna post the solutions for you to check these. Feel free to reach out if you've got any questions at all, and good luck.